What's going on everybody, Jolt here from the Token Minorities and I am bringing you week 3 of the NPL. Uh, we are actually the game of the week this week, this is the Toronto Star Raptors against the Portland Timbers, coached by my friend Togavoir. So this is no doubt going to be a very fun game, a very tense game this week, as uh, we both have some very powerful threats against each other's teams. So uh, the team matchup, or at least the team preview, is going to play a huge role in uh, who ends up winning this game. So before I move into an overview of my opponent's team for this game, I just wanted to thank you guys again for all the support on our March Madness uh, tournament. Uh, we had several people sign up, so thanks again to all of you who signed up, and I hope you uh, do very well in this tournament. I wish you all good luck, um, except against me. I want all the good luck I can <laughs> against you guys. No offense, but uh, yeah, good luck in the tournament. Thanks again for signing up, and make sure to let us know if you have any questions or concerns on that. So now jumping into the team overview of my opponent's team. Uh, it looks like uh, my friend Kyle uh, left us a little message here, K to the 2. Definitely check out his channel. He's a very cool guy. Uh, upcoming YouTuber. He's the commissioner of our league. That's the, the uh, player I played last week. Um, so looking at... Togavor's team, he has Superior as his MVP. It has a plus four differential so far, so it's definitely been doing well for him. However, um, against my team, I'm actually not too worried about it because I do have at least three Mons that can be considered counters to Superior in my Mega Venusaur, um, Entei with an Assault Vest, and of course my Tornadus T, all of which just straight up wall Superior and can Oko it with respective super effective moves. So um, I'm not terribly worried about Superior in this game, and I actually don't anticipate him to bring it. Next up, he has this Mega Gallade, which definitely is a threat. Um, I have a few options for handling it. I have Gliger, which uh, can live anything <laughs> he wants to go for. Um, I'm even only to it KO'd by an Ice Punch. I think an Ad or a Jolly Ice Punch from Mega, Mega Gallade is like roughly 65% damage on a uh, Gliger with max defense, so I can definitely take it and then deal a big chunk of damage with acrobatics so um that's an option i also have wobbuffet that if i do tailor it um defensively as opposed to specially defensive uh, special defensively i can counter ko the mega galay but i will have to be careful of the swords dance i might have to encore him into a swords dance it's, it gets a little bit murky when i try to use wobbuffet um to beat mega galay but i definitely have the glider which can handle it um so i I need to keep an eye on Mega Galate, but I should be okay. And then against Celebi, um, his next Mon, I have a lot to deal with it as well, especially considering it really is set up fodder for a Volcarona. Um, so I'll, I'll probably try to abuse that in this game coming up. I do need to be careful of a Baton Pass Celebi, though, as Baton Pass has kind of been a hot strategy in the past, uh, past couple weeks of the MPL, so I definitely need to keep an eye on that. I know that last week, Togavor did have a very rough loss to a Baton Pass team, um, so I would not be surprised if he tries to whip that out, whip that out against me as a little bit of uh, revenge for his salt um, from last week. So um, that's that's definitely a threat, but otherwise Celebi is not too big of a deal as far as I'm concerned. Um, and then he has Melodic, which actually serves as the only uh, defensive option he has against many of my sweepers, or at least a couple of my sweepers. So if I can take care of Melodic somehow um, with maybe one of my other mods, maybe with Wobbuffet, I can actually open the door for my other sweepers to do a lot of work in this game. Next up he has Hydreigon, which I'm not I'm not terribly worried about, um, especially considering I'll almost no doubt run a specially defensive Mega Venusaur in this game, and that just eats up anything Hydreigon wants to do, so I'm not terribly worried about it, but if he does bring it, I'll just have to be careful against it and make sure I don't let my Venusaur get too weak, um, and etc, etc. I also could run a specially defensive Vaporeon, which would handle Hydreigon very well. Next up he has Starmie, which actually is the Mon that I am most worried about on this team, particularly if he runs a Choiced Trick Starmie. Um, a Choiced Starmie 
will do a lot of damage to my entire team, or really any Starmie, like a Life Orb Starmie as well, will do a lot of damage to my team, considering it does have Psychic Stab, which makes Mega Venusaur a not switch in. Um, it does have Hydro Pump that hits very heavily, Life Orb or Specs, or even Scarf if he wants to go there. And then he has great coverage options in Thunderbolt and Ice Beam and Energy Ball, I believe. So it's definitely a very threatening Mon that I'm going to have to play carefully against. However, I do have a clean stop to Starmie named Wobbuffet. So Wobbuffet will pretty much no doubt get its debut in this week, uh, in this week's game. So that's kind of fun. The only fear there is that if he does run a choice to star me, he could trick the Wobbuffet and then things would get a little bit nasty for me. So um, that's a thing, but I do have to play very, very carefully against star me because it is a huge threat. Next up is Regirock and uh, I'm not worried about Regirock, I'm just going to say it. Um, Regirock is very low tier for a reason. It really is Togevoir's only option against Volcarona, though. Like, I can come up with a Volcarona set that just decimates his team, but it's going to be stopped by Regirock regardless. So if he brings Regirock, that is going to be his answer to Volcarona. But if he doesn't bring Regirock, then Volcarona is definitely win condition number one in this game. Next up is Jolteon, which really... On its own isn't really a threat to my team, but it is a good check to my mons. Not a counter, it is a check. So I anticipate him bringing it for that reason, um, but when he does bring it in, I'm not going to be too worried about it because I can easily just go into Mega Venusaur. I can easily just go into, I don't know, Gligar. I don't expect him to run HB Ice. So like it's not, it's not going to be a big threat in this game, but it almost no doubt will be on his team. Next up is Drapion. I am not worried about this thing whatsoever. I can just go straight into Venusaur on this and uh, be in good shape because he can't do anything back to me. If he does happen to be a Swords Dance variant, um, then I have other options that I can go into, but I just don't expect him to bring Drapion considering its matchup in our game is pretty terrible. Next up is Togekiss, which actually is the Mon that I'm second most worried about because it does have access to Flying Stab with the high flinch rate, which we all know here that my luck is beyond terrible. So if he does happen to bring Togekiss and he does happen to be in a position to flinch me repeatedly, I might be in for a bad time. So I need to make sure to stay on top of Togekiss. I need to maintain momentum in this game such that Togekiss does not become a hindrance to what I want to do in this game. Last up is the Honchkrow, and Honchkrow itself, again, is going to be a threat because it does have Flying Stab, but I find it to be less of a threat than Togekiss for two reasons. One, it can't flinch me with Brave Bird, and two, um, I have answers to it, <laughs> basically. I don't have, really have many answers to Togekiss because like, all my switch-ins are going to be slower and potentially flinched, or are going to be taking super effective damage. Um, so, Honchkrow is... <sighs> I don't know, it's not as big of a threat because I do have stuff that can tank hits from it, namely like Gligar or maybe a defensive Vaporeon. Um, so for those reasons, I'm not as worried about it and he might not actually bring it in this game. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump into my team building process. Alright, so first of all, shoutouts to my friend MV for helping me make this team. Um, so we began by, again, recognizing that Wobbuffet is going to be the only stop that I have to star me. So Wobbuffet is where this team begins, and now we're going to build the team around Wobbuffet such that Wobbuffet shines and such that my sweepers will shine as well. So we began with Wobbuffet, and then we looked at Togevoir's team, and we tried to find what mons of mine were going to be able to put in the most work against it. Um... So, with that in mind, the first thing that came up was Halucha. Um, Walucha, Hal, <laughs> Walucha, Halucha actually puts in an enormous amount of work against his team because the only thing he really has to stop it is Togekiss, but Togekiss isn't taking these hits very well. So, like, after a Swords Dance, Togekiss is easily to it KO'd, and I believe it does, like, 80 to 90%. Like, it's it's incredible. Halucha's very strong. He really doesn't have anything to take it, especially after it has a Swords Dance up. And, of course, the Citrus Berry Unburdened Boost. Um, so, that's a thing. Halucha <laughs> is going to be very good in this game. And uh, it's a very standard set here. I went with Drain Punch over High Jump Kick, just in case he wanted to be cheeky and have some random Protect users. And uh, I didn't really want to lose 50% of my health on Halucha for no reason, considering a Drain Punch does plenty of damage to everything that I wouldn't be able to use Acrobatics on. 
And I never really mentioned Wobbuffet's EVs back here. It's just a standard spread that you see on Smogon with a calm nature to maximize the amount of damage it can take from a Hydra Pump from the Starmie or from a... Uh, a powerful special move from something else. Plus, it has enough defense investment that it'll be able to handle Gallade if need be. The next sweeper um, here is the Volcarona. Considering he only has two Pokemon that can handle Volcarona in any fashion, and those are the Milotic and the uh, Regirock. Now, I have Giga Drain on this Volcarona to handle both of those options. Um, plus, of course, Quiver Dance, max special attack, modest, and then enough speed, um, I believe, to outspeed Jolteon at plus one. Outspeed Timid Jolteon at plus one, if I remember correctly. Um, so, that's that was the EV spread, and... Um, Essentially, this thing is so strong that if I can get plus one uh, from a Quiver Dance on anything, and I have my Lodic and or Regirock weakened, the game is over. Like, he has nothing to take this. His only real option would be a Sucker Punch from the Honchkrow, and of course, I just go straight into Gliker on that. So that was the idea here. Volcarona and Halucha both are going to make for a very scary duo for Togevoir to deal with. But then, I move on to the third sweeper, and if you look back at his team, Sub, Pattaya, and Polion just destroys him. His only real option against it is the Melodic, but he needs Melodic to beat Volcarona, and uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, but he's not going to be taking hits from both Empoleon and Volcarona, so um, essentially Empoleon's going to be the uh, the late game win condition, I'm going to call it in this game, as uh, once the team is worn down, it's it's over, <laughs> like this Empoleon is going to just run right through him, so that's the idea here, the investment allows a very high amount of speed, MV made that EV spread, I never really optimized it, but I don't think it was really necessary either, as the max special attack and high speed is all I really needed, um, as long as the Bataya activates at the appropriate time, so that was the idea there, those are the three sweepers that are going to be uh, the the, the the partners for Wobbuffet, I'll say, and Wobbuffet's going to be the star in this game, as MV called it. And now I uh, planned my wall core for this game, and it really wasn't much of a debate. Uh, Venusaur, especially defensive Mega Venusaur, that is, was of utmost importance in this game. And, um... <laughs> The EV spread is very standard. The move set is quite standard. I went with Sleep Powder over Leech Seed, considering if I put something to sleep on his team, hopefully the Togekiss, um, I'll be in even better shape than I was before. So um, the Venusaur is going to be, I don't know, the center of the team. Even though like the, the Wobbuffet and the Sweepers are very important in this game, Venusaur is equally as important. So I believe each team member is going to hold its weight in this game. It's going to have to for us to pull this out. And then finally, Gliger, a max HP, max defense, and a little bit in speed just in case he tries to speed creep. And uh, I don't know. A Gliger is going to be taking hits from Mega Gallade. It'll be able to dish back hits with Acrobatics. It'll be Hazard Control with Stealth Rock Defog um, in this game, but that's, that's about the size of it. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into the battle, shall we? So at Team Preview, we have a pretty uh, pretty sexy matchup, not gonna lie. So he did bring the Starmie, as expected. He brought the Melodic, as he kind of had to. Um, he brought Mega Gallade, as expected. He brought Celebi, which is fine, because it is just set up fodder for the Volcarona, which does have a Lumberry, by the way. I forgot to mention that earlier. And that Lumberry is there because of random paralysis from Togekiss or Celebi. So that's a thing. Um, he brought Jolteon, as expected. So he, he really brought the Mons that I anticipated him bringing, which makes this team building that much better um so basically the idea here is i need to try to predict what he wants to lead with and i think he's going to lead with jolteon um jolteon just seems like the optimal lead for him considering it does hit the majority of my mons bar mega venusaur so what i'm going to do here is lead with mega venusaur and uh, hope to put something to sleep immediately um again Really, I already emphasized all this in the team building process and in the pre-analysis, but Wobbuffet is going to be the star in this game. I need to trap Starmie, I need to somehow handle Melodic, and then I can just clean sweep. Um, so let's go ahead and jump into this. Okay, so I led off with Mega Venusaur, and he leads off with Jolteon, as expected. So that was very nice. I got the lead matchup, and really I thought that was all I really needed to be able to win this game, given the team preview. I just go straight for the Sleep Powder, and I catch the Toke Kiss. So that is one step down on my journey to sweeping this man. So I got the Toke Kiss, 
Um, and now I'm just going to go for the Sludge Bomb because it hits his entire team. I get the Poison on the Gallade, which is great. And now I'm just going to go straight into my Glyger, considering it is a perfect switch in. And I really don't care what he has to do um, because it is Poison now. It's going to be taking latent damage, which is great. But he does pull a double into his Celebi. And now I'm just expecting Stealth Rock. But I find it more viable at this point, or more valuable at this point, to go straight into my Volcarona as opposed to setting up my own Stealth Rocks. Because now I can just get a free Quiver Dance up and potentially just sweep him right here. Um, so I just get the quiver up and I'm just going to go for the bug buzz. I know a fire blast won't kill so there's no point in going for that here just in case I miss. Here he reveals the HP rock and he also reveals the assault vest so that's kind of an interesting set on his part but luckily my Volcarona is able to handle the HP rock after the quiver and I'm able to take it right out with the uh, bug buzz. Here I just go straight for the Giga Drain against the Melodic. Now this was kind of a naive play because Melodic does have access to mirror coat so I do lose my Volcarona here but it is okay because I do have two other win conditions in the back both of which are going to be very very valuable in this game but I have to keep the pressure on this Melodic right here because if I let it recover then Empoleon is not an immediate win condition but if I don't let it recover then Empoleon is an immediate win condition so um, I'm going to go straight into my Mega Venusaur here after he pegs me with the mirror coat um, and I'm just gonna go straight for the Giga Drain I don't care what he does um, as long as Melodic is dead <laughs> I'm happy so I go for the Giga Drain Melodic goes down I'm sitting at a pretty 5 to 4 advantage and he goes straight into Starmie I don't care what he does at this point I'm going straight into Wobbuffet to hope for the trap and the KO and I get the trap so I'm very happy at this point um, this part becomes a little bit stally because he's scared that I'm going to kill him with Mirako. But what he doesn't realize is that I don't care what he does at this point. Because if he's just going to click Rabbit Spin, I'm going to spam Mirako until my Wobbuffet is at full health because why not he's just giving me that so I'm going to take full health with my Wobbuffet and then I'm going to encore him into rapid spin and then I'm going to set up with either Empoleon or Halucha and potentially win this game right here so um, I'm in great position right now and I don't even know if he I I'm sure he recognizes that he's in trouble at this point but um, he said in the chat at this point that he's just gonna do this until I click encore and I'm like okay that's fine with me uh, if you as soon as I click encore this game's essentially over so um, here I decide it's time to go ahead and Encore, get Wobbuffet back up to 99%, close enough. Um, and I just go straight into Halucha, he can only Rapid Spin on this turn, so I'm not worried. And uh, I'm just going to go straight for that Substitute on this turn as he switches out into his Gallade, which was a misplay. Um, as far as I'm concerned, because Gallade really can't do much to me. I'm just going to go for that Sword Stance here, because his only priority is the Shadow Sneak, and that's not going to do 57%. So I don't, I'm not fearing it <laughs> at all at this point. And uh, I have the Swords Dance, and I'm just going to go for that Acrobatics here. I do not have my Citrus Berry activated yet, but I can sub down on his entire team um, due to my investment. So I'm going to take the opportunity to do that here against his Sleeping Togekiss, which has not burned a turn of sleep yet. So I'm in a great position. I have a sub, I'm at plus two attack. Togekiss does not wake up on this turn, and the game's essentially over at this point. So that was a very quick game. Um... Probably quicker than I ever anticipated it being, but the strategy worked out. The team matchup was totally in my favor, and uh, it was it was a fun game. It was a very fun game. I had a lot of fun playing it. Um, but yeah, that was a five to zero victory for the Toronto Star Raptors, and that moves us to a two and one record, um, and it further solidifies my place. Uh, my first place in our conference at the moment so we're very happy with that um but yeah that's the end of this mpl week three video and i hope you enjoyed and we will see you all in week four as i take on let's see who do i take on i believe i take on danza and his squad which is the los angeles nito kings and that's sure to be a fun game against a very popular youtuber so Definitely keep an eye out for that, and I will see you all next time. Peace.